Hi, this is Russell Pearson, and I wanted to quickly jump in here and invite you to subscribe. So subscribe to The Marketing Report for the absolute latest in marketing, sales, and growth strategies for your business delivered directly to you. Now let's get on with the show. Welcome to The Marketing Report. My name is Russell Pearson, and then this is episode number 14. The Marketing Report is a podcast for passionate yet frustrated business owners who are looking for a competitive edge. And today I want to talk about effort. Uh, if you are in any sort of space around achievement, around leadership, you will have come across the motivational side of effort. And pretty much that whole side says that you need to work harder than anybody else in your industry to get the results that you want. And while sometimes that can be quite true, what I find the majority of business owners that I'm speaking with are doing is putting effort in the wrong places. And were they, uh, were they to put effort in the correct places or the places that are gonna give, give us the, the most powerful return on our investment, then that they would actually have to work a lot less than they're currently working. Because energy is all we're working with, right? So it's energy in the past, which is now in the form of money, or energy in the future, which is in the form of time. This is all we're working with, it's energy. And we're gonna burn ourselves out if we don't use that energy wisely. So today I wanna to talk about effort. And not just about putting effort in, like and trying to raise it to 110%, which is impossible by the way, or 120% you always hear people saying. I want you to just give and a, a reasonable effort that at the end of the day, you feel like you've done things that moved you forward toward the business you deserve and ideally the business that you dream of. And so we're putting those efforts in place. It's just important to decide where do you put the effort. Now, the most of people think that they're putting in uh, effort constantly because it feels like they're doing a lot of stuff. And we're all doing a lot of stuff. The world is very busy, no doubt but it's usually because all these different things are distracting us from doing the one, two or three things that are the best focus of our time and our effort to actually move us in the direction that we need to be doing. So rather than moving in the momentum of this one straight line, we end up going this way and that way and this way and that way. Now you've got emails, you've got phone calls, you've got all these things that are getting in, in into your head and getting in the way of you doing good and joyful work. The joyful work is the work where you've done it and you don't feel like, ugh, that was an effort. You feel like, great, I've done that, and I actually feel like I've accomplished something. So where should your efforts be going? Now, one of the things that's come up this week is uh, target market. So a lot of people are trying to engage their target market when they're trying to uh, uh, bring them in for sales conversations. And what I'm discovering is sometimes the target market isn't quite right, and therefore there's a lot more effort needing to, to be done to get uh, leads in the door and then get conversion conversations started. So I'll tell you a little story about, it's a really a case study of something that's I think happened uh, in the last, let's say five years, maybe a little bit further back than that, Zero. So Zero is an accounting package, that's X-E-R-O. Definitely one worth looking up, not just because it's a great product, but because of the way they went to market. So Xero could have com uh, competed with uh, MyOB or MyOB, uh, Click, uh, QuickBooks or any of those other accounting packages, but instead of doing that, what they did is that they didn't go direct to business owners, they didn't go to the end user, they went to accountants. And so they went to the trusted advisor in that scenario and said, we would like to sell the reason to use Zero to you. We want to make it as easy for you as the accountant to be able to use our software and make it very useful for your business. The accountant then as the trusted advisor for all the, the mums and dads out there or the, uh, the business owners actually went to those people and advised them to start using Zero because it would be easier for their business. But at the end of the day, it was easier for the accountants to use. And so rather than spending a lot of effort, time, money, and influence in trying to get to the end users, which is just picking one, two, three sales at a time, they actually went to the accountants who had 200 people on their book and convinced them that Zero was the package they should be using. And then they convinced the next 200 people. So the accountant convinced the next 200 people rather than Zero having to the, do the effort. So they were able to convince one person in that accountant who then went on and convinced 200 other people to join their program. So a great case study and use of effort. So within your business, is it possible that you're going to the end user more often than you need to? 
is the product that you're, you've created or the service you've created that people are using, would it be better to actually find someone who could advise multiple people to use your product or service rather than you having to convince the end user every time? These are called referrals and referral marketing is a massive uh, area of especially professional services, whether it be accountants, lawyers, uh, legal matters, property, all those sort of things, but it can happen within anybody's business. There is the construction industry, trade industries. There are spaces where people already have a relationship with an end customer and if you influence them, they can actually engage more people than you can you can get access to. So. Rather than always going to the end user, look in your efforts, is there a step back where I can actually apply my, my engagement and my communication to one step removed from the end customer and get more actually net a group of customers by going to that one person rather than I have to go to 20 or 30 end users. So what, what could you be doing in your business a little bit further up the chain? Now the other thing with effort is, what is the specific things that you can be doing in your business that are gonna drive you forward? You probably subconsciously, or you may even actually know what are the things that, that get you the best results when you do them, but you avoid them for multiple reasons. So cold calls or phone calls in general are a massive example of that. I know that within my business, if I made phone calls, even if I made cold call phone calls, I can, cold call phone calls, I can hit 5% every single time converting to a meeting, which means that if I want 10 conversations, I only need to go to 200 people. So 200 phone calls, I can do that in a day or two and actually get myself booked out for the next week. So if I did that consistently, I would need no other lead channels, but I don't like doing it. <laughs> so it comes down to uh, not just uh, what is the thing that's going to get you the best results, but what are you going to do on a consistent basis? Now, the best way to do this is to get awareness around it. So what I suggest and what was suggested to me years back was to actually start tracking my time. Where am I spending my time and how much of my time is dedicated to the things that I'm trying to focus on, whether that be my goals or in the case back when I was actually looking at it in particular, it was I was trying to grow my business. So what were the things that I was doing that were, that were aiming to grow my business? Now, I thought I was doing a whole lot of things, but in actual fact, I was being distracted by this, that and the other, reading an article here or um, uh, talking to someone that had absolutely nothing to do with growing my business over there, going to a network meeting that didn't help me either. All these things, uh, and it wasn't a case of I didn't know what I didn't know, it was more of a case of I was distracting myself because I wanted to make my day feel busy and not actually, uh, while, while I wanted results, I thought the, the, the way through was to be busy. So if you track what you're doing and at the end of the week, actually look at what percentage of time was spent on the specific goal you're trying to achieve now, and as if, if that's grow your business by an extra 20 clients, what percentage of your activities during the week were dedicated to that? I know that you will be surprised at the lack of, uh, at the small percentage that was actually dedicated to that if you're not getting the results now. If you're getting the results, you might actually look and go, actually, wow, all right, this is how much time I need to spend to get those sort of results. And sometimes you look at it and you go, well, that's 30% of my week. Well, that's maybe too much because I've got to do all these other things. So how can I actually take some of those tasks within that 30% and get someone else to do them? So where is the best use of your effort? Is the best use of your effort to go to end customers and having sales conversations or is your best use of your effort to engage people who can do that for you, to have those referral conversations, whatever it might be within your business? Because what you'll find is that there'll be one, two or three things, whether it be phone calls, whether it be emails, uh, whether it be uh, conversations that you're having via social media, whatever it might be, you'll find there'll be one, two or three things that are actually where you get the majority of your leads. You know, they say the 80-20 rule, that 80% of your results coming from 20% of your actions. And if you get realistic about that, often you'll find that those 20% of actions that are getting 80% of results are the things that have become a little bit boring for you because that is one of the things that stops people from being consistent is this boredom. And now I've worked in design for so many years and one of the things that people were, were doing to, um, to refresh their business was changing the look and feel of it. 
Now they didn't need to change the look and feel of it, they just got bored with it because they saw it every single day. So there needs to be ways for you to uh, change things up because the reality is the person on the other end of the phone, this is, they're hearing you for the first time. You've heard yourself call people 20, 30, 40, 50 times and so you're now bored with it. This is the first time they've heard from you so they're very engaged in the conversation. But if you're less engaged in the conversation than the person on the other line, there is a problem, right? So what are the things that you can be doing to get into state, to actually get into a frame of mind where you can be doing those things that potentially are perceived as boring or potentially thing, uh, things that feel like they take a lot of effort because they are so simple, they don't feel like they're actually, you're not growing, you're not achieving good things. How can you take those things and add something to it to give it a bit more flavor? So one of the things we used to do when I was actually running my telemarketing business is that we would have people get up every hour and actually do a little exercise together. And it would just, it would build the camaraderie within the, uh, within the office and it would actually uh, re-energize people and just shuffle them up a bit so they're not stuck in a rut of doing the same thing over and over again because they needed to be in the correct state so that their effort was going toward the best outcomes. Because as I said, if you're having a conversation with somebody, and, and this happens a lot of the time when uh, you've got a sales script and you've become very good at it and you've said it for the millionth time to someone, once you start getting really good at it, it's converting people, but you may be bored with it. So you go and try and change it. You don't need to change it, it works, but you get bored with it. So what are some other ways that you can change your, uh, your state, your environment, the things around you, to get you energized around this system you've created that actually works. It's surprising to me how many people build uh, successful little systems uh, and then they don't go on to grow those systems because they go, oh, that's done, I'm bored with it now, I want the new next thing. And that's the nature of the majority of you is that you're entrepreneurs, you're founders of businesses, and so you get things started, but then you get things started and you sort of like leave them. <laughs> you, should, you should be getting things started, getting to them to a point and then handing them off to someone who enjoys managing. So if you're not a person who enjoys managing, find people who are managers, even if it's, even if it's just a, a graduate that's coming in from college, they've got the mindset of enjoying the management of things. Get them to manage a simple process and grow it from there by doing those repetitive tasks and improving those repetitive tasks over and over and over again, but not changing the whole thing wholesale because you got bored with it. So where is your effort currently? Are you talking to the right people when you're actually trying to engage people for sales conversations? Is it the right market or should you go further up the tree to engage potential referral partners? Where is your time being spent? What percentage of your time during the week is being spent on activities that are gonna get you the results you're trying to accomplish now? And are you changing up things for the sake of changing them because you're bored with them? Potentially you need to change your environment. Those, those same systems can actually work very, very differently within a different environment. They can still very much work, but you may feel better about them because you're in a new space. So thoughts for you, where are you putting your effort? Track your time, work it out, See if the uh, it could be better to go up the tree to try and talk to referral partners as a way of actually uh, using less effort and getting bigger results. And, uh, and ideally what I want you to do is stay passionate, which is why we need to keep you in state. And, and by state, I mean the emotional state to actually do the things and have the energy you need to be passionate in those sales conversations and be passionate on the phone, be passionate on social media, wherever it is, so that people understand that you care about the products and services that you're delivering. So stay passionate. I will catch you all next week and have a fantastic next seven days. Make sure to visit russellpearson.com for more podcast episodes, videos, and more. russellpearson.com.